Hey guys, it's Bank for Buck PC Gamer here. Today I'm going to be talking about the newly released NVIDIA Titan X. That's the Titan X on the Pascal architecture. And it is an eye watering $1,200 or 1,100 Great British Pounds if you're in the UK like myself. So, what do you get for all of this money? It does boost 40% more CUDA cores than the GP104 GTX 1080. So that's 3,584 CUDA cores with a rated clock of 1417 MHz, 224 texturing units, 96 ROP units, and 12 GB of GDDR5X. Memory clock is still 10 GHz per second, so still the same speed as the GTX 1080, but it's built on a 384-bit memory interface and has 480 GB per second of memory bandwidth. So a very very fast card but with a lot of muscle as well. 250 watts TDP limit just like the GTX Titan X and the GTX 980 Ti with 11 teraflops of peak compute performance. That's insane. Also 11 billion transistors on the 16 nanometer process. So very very impressive specs on paper. But how much faster is it than the GTX 1080? And this is a question I was very eager to find out the answer to. So the first game I want to be looking at is Dirt Rally. At 1440p the Titan X boasts 41% faster than GTX 1080, 72% faster than the GTX 980 Ti and a massive 76% faster than the Fury X and also 35% faster than a pair of GTX 980s and SLI so right off the bat you can see this card is no no slouch. 42% um, faster at 4K than the GTX 1080, 73% faster than the GTX 980 Ti and 70% 70 70 faster than the Fury X and also 37% faster than the GTX 980s in SLI so basically kicking some arse in Dirt Rally and nothing can really match it and this is all at stock as well so moving on to Fallout 4 25% faster than the GTX 1080 at 1440p, 51% faster than the GTX 980 Ti and a massive 73% faster than the AMD Fury X but a small 12% increase in performance over a pair of GTX 980s in SLI. Now looking at the performance in 4K, it's 39% faster than the GTX 1080, 68% faster than the GTX 980 Ti a huge 82% faster than the Fury X and a small 19% faster than a pair of GTX 980s in SLI. So um, not too much better than the GTX 980s in SLI but um, considerably faster than the GTX 1080 and Fury X especially at 4K. Moving on to Hitman and this is all at DirectX 12. 17% um, faster than the GTX 1080 which isn't a great deal at 1440p a massive 66% faster than the GTX 980 Ti and a reasonable 37% faster than the Fury X but a huge 110% faster than a pair of GTX 980 SLIs and that will duly be down to the GTX 980s not supporting SLI for Hitman. So at 4K 25% faster than the GTX 1080 70% faster than the GTX 980 Ti which is huge at 4K 65% faster than the Fury X and a staggering 159% faster than the GTX 980s in SLI at 4K so this card performs pretty well in DX12 scenarios as you can see but we'll get a better idea how really good it is when AMD brings out their enthusiast grade GPU Moving on to Rise of the Tomb Raider, a game where NVIDIA is pretty strong in. This is all ran at uh, DirectX uh, 11, I believe. That's 36% faster than the GTX 1080 at 1440p, a huge 79% faster than the GTX 980 Ti, a staggering 127% faster than the Fury X, and also 137% faster than the GTX 980s in SLI. Moving up to 4K, 33% faster than the GTX 1080, a huge 70% faster than the GTX 980 Ti, and almost double the performance of the Fury X at 93% faster, and 133% faster than the GTX 980 in SLI. So, 
This game should be able to be played at 4K at the very high settings on a single card um, with no problem if you got the performance of a Titan X on the Pascal architecture. Moving on to Grand Theft Auto 5, we're looking at a minor 4% increase over the GTX 1080 at 1440p, a 30% increase over the GTX 980 Ti and a huge 74% increase over the Fury X and a same percent increase as well over the GTX 980 SLI only 4% so not too much gained if you're gaming at 1440p but if you're gaming at 4k then you can enjoy a 34% increase over the GTX 1080 a huge 73% increase over the 980 Ti and a massive 102% increase over the Fury X um, a reasonable 21% increase over the GTX 980 SLI so even at 4k None of these cards have been able to beat it in one benchmark, so this, this card is definitely the undisputed king. So the last game I'm going to be talking about now is The Witcher 3, a very demanding game. 35% faster at 1440p than the GTX 1080, 71% faster than the GTX 980 Ti, and a staggering 85% faster than the AMD Fury X, all while being 29% faster than the GTX 980 in SLI, so... Um, at 1440p completely just destroying its opposition at 4k 38% faster than the GTX 1080 74% faster than the GTX 980 Ti and Fury X at 4k which is amazing and 29% faster than a pair of GTX 980s and SLI so as you can see this card really 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 does excel at 4k and I personally believe with a decent overclock this should be pretty much the first 4k card legit 4k card that will pretty much handle every game you throw at it by itself so speaking of overclocking what i've seen so far is you're going to be able to get about 1900 megahertz out of this and that's with an increase of 150 megahertz on a core haven't seen anything to do with memory overclocking yet but that's around about 10 percent increase in performance so if you add on 10 percent to all of these results and you're pretty much should be hitting 60 frames per second in almost every game at 4k so um, it'll be interesting to see some more benchmarks when they become available but for now um, this is just a complete beast and probably the only card that's worthy of being called a beast a lot of people overuse that word but this is a true beast and do I want one? Yes, I do want one, but <laughs> I can't afford one. So if you're someone that um, cares about price to performance and value, then this is just not the card for you. This is a card for people who want the very best, who want to let it be known that they accept no compromise. And if you've got the money to do this, I say more power to you. Forget what anyone else is saying. If you know this is going to satisfy your needs, then all, by all means, just go out and grab one. So that's what i think about the gtx i mean not the gtx titan x but the nvidia titan x as they removed it from the gtx family just to kind of further distinguish that it's not a gaming card but um, my thoughts on the card absolute powerhouse pounds every single other card around into submission especially the gtx 980 ti and fury x and even battles off a pair of gtx 980s and sli obviously it's twelve hundred dollars so and that is quite a, a massive price but if you want the best you're gonna have to pay for it so that's what I think about it great card massive price best around nothing more to say about it anyway guys that's pretty much it for me hopefully you've enjoyed this video and as always thanks for watching